Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial. My name is Tensor. Today's tutorial will be the final tutorial for our Minesweeper game. In this final tutorial, we will finally add a fail state, a win state. We'll also make it so that we have a timer and a scorekeeper. And we'll generally just touch up the user interface so that the game works properly and so that we can reset the game board after we win or lose. Now there are a few things to note about the classic Minesweeper game and these are the features that we will be bringing into our version of the game. Right here we have this timer. The timer does not start until you click a tile. You can see I click a tile and now it starts counting upwards. Also when I click a mine and you know we get this uh, sad face, I can then click the smiley face and it will reset the board and of course stop the timer and reset the mine count. And we want a little reset button for our application as well. So the easiest way to deal with all these features is to create a set of global variables to deal with each of them. We'll have two booleans, one called alive, one called one game. We'll have an integer called mines found. We'll have a timer, and you can see this is actually throwing an error because we do not have the asynchronous library in this namespace quite yet. And we'll also have a stopwatch. So because we want our timer to work properly, we need to make an import for Dart async. And you'll see that now the timer type exists inside of our application. Also, because our timer is essentially just a stream, we want to be able to dispose of the stream if our widget is disposed of. So we just override the dispose function. We put in timer question mark dot cancel. This checks to see if the timer is null before calling the cancel method on it. So if it is null, it won't actually execute. But if it isn't null, then it will execute. Now to reset the game state for this application, we have this reset board function. This means that we can also initialize these other global variables inside of this reset board function and it will make it quite easy for us to reset the game after we've won or lost. In here we want to take alive, set it to true because obviously when this function gets called the user is alive. We want to set one game to false because the user hasn't won the game, they just began the game. Mines found will be zero because they will have not found any mines since the board will have been reset and then we'll take our stopwatch and we'll reset it. This will make it so that the stopwatch will actually start. With regards to our timer, we also want to call timer question mark cancel. And we're doing this because when we reset the application, the timer may already be running. And because we want our timer to be consistent, we need to cancel it first if it already exists before we make a new one. After we cancel it, then we can make our new timer and we do this by calling timer.periodic, putting in a duration that we want this to tick for, which will be every second. And then we have a callback function, which will just call the set state function every second, because we want our timer, which is our clock, to update every second. Basically, our timer is just a repeating duration, so it just repeats over and over, one second, one second, one second, one second and we can use this signal and push it into our stopwatch to generate how many seconds have passed since the user has started working on the board. All right, so this is all we really need to do for this reset board function. Now let's come down to our build board function. In here, we want to create a Boolean at the very top called has covered cell, and we want to set it equal to false. Then down inside of our two for loops, after we initialize this count variable with our mount count function, we want to check to see if the user is alive or not. So we check to see if the user is not alive, which means that if we are alive, this returns false. And if we aren't alive, it will return true. And if the state of the current tile is not equal to tile state dot blown, then we want to set the state of our current tile based on whether or not it has a mine in it. In here, we're saying, okay, if tiles yx is true, meaning it has a mine in it, then we set the tile state to tile state.revealed. 
Otherwise, we just pass in the state that already is in the tile. So we just leave it alone. We're doing this so that we have the functionality that lets us click on the mine, and when we lose the game, it shows where all of the other mines are. So because I've clicked on this mine, you can see these other mines get revealed. So by turning all of our mines that aren't blown thus far into tile state revealed, they then get revealed to the user. There is one little thing that I forgot yesterday, and that was to add this if check on our on tap function. So we want to check to see if the state of the tile that we're clicking on is tilestate.covered before we call this probe function. Now, the reason we want to do this is so that we can't click on a flagged tile. Now, down below where we finish creating the gesture detector, we want to check to see that the state is equal to tilestate.covered. And if it is, then we take the Boolean that we created at the top, has covered cell, and we set it equal to true. And this Boolean is important because you can't win Minesweeper if all of the cells are covered. The way that you've win Minesweeper is if you've opened up all of the tiles that you can and you've flagged all of the mines that exist on the board, which means that there should be no tile state that covered on your board. We have this Boolean to check to see if there is any tile that is currently quote unquote tile state that covered. And then below where we're taking our board row list and putting in our row children, we can then check to see if has covered cell is not equal to true, meaning there, there is no covered cell left. And then we can check to see if mines found is equal to the number of mines and the user is still alive. And if all of that comes back as true, we can then set one game to true and then we can stop our stopwatch. So this will make it so that the user actually wins the game. And of course, they win the game if they've found all of the mines, they've flagged all the mines, and all of the other tiles have been opened. Now let's come down to the functions that we created yesterday. So we want to add some checks to these functions so that a user can't keep playing the game after the game has failed. And we also want to make it so that the user actually has a fail state if they click on a mine. So currently we can click on a mine and the mine will be revealed and we use this probe function to do this. At the top of the probe function, however, we want to check to see if we're not alive. And if we're not alive, then we just quit the function, which means the user can't push any more tiles and so they can't reveal any more of the board. Now also because we now have this alive Boolean, we can set it to false when the user clicks on a mine inside of this if statement. And then of course we can also take our timer and turn it off. And this will give us a true failure state for our game. So if the user clicks on a mine, then we cancel the timer and the user then loses and all the other mines get revealed. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, the other thing that we want to add is the ability to start the stopwatch when we click on our first tile. So that has to do with this branch here. So after we call the open function, we can then check to see if the stopwatch is not running yet. And then we can just call stopwatch.start, which will start up our stopwatch, which will allow us to record how much time has passed since the user has started the game. And then we can shut it off when the user either loses or wins. Now, we also want to make some modifications to our flag function. We want to make it so that the user can't keep flagging our tiles after they're dead. So like we did before, we just check to see if the user is not alive. And then if they're not alive, we return from this function. So we quit out of the function. Therefore, they can't change the tile state. We also want to use our mines found variable, which we defined up above which documents how many mines have been found by the user. And if they've taken a flag away from a current flag tile, then we want to decrement that number. And if they've flagged a tile, then we want to increment that number. All right, so now this is all the functionality that we want for our application. And actually, if we were to run our application, it would now work like a true Minesweeper application. However, we do not have the user interface that we want, meaning we do not have a button that allows the user to reset the game. 
and we do not have displays that show our timer, that show how many mines the user has found, and whether or not the user has won or lost. So let's look at our current game. If we click on things, it opens up as it should. We can flag things, and if I do click on a mine like that, you can see all the mines now get revealed. And if I try to continue playing the game, I can't. To make our timer work, we just want to create a local integer inside of our build function called time elapsed. We call stopwatch.elapsed milliseconds, and then we divide this with integer division by 1000, and this will allow us to get the current number of seconds that have elapsed since our stopwatch has started. Now there are a few little minor tweaks that we want to make here. We want to take the resize to avoid bottom padding property and set it to false so that our board doesn't get cut off for any reason. And we also want to take and add the center tile property to our app bar and set it equal to true. This will make it so that our title gets moved from the left to the center. Now we can fill out a property called bottom and this is the bottom of our app bar. This allows us to basically add elements to the bottom of our app bar and typically you'd use this to add a set of tabs but in our case we can add what's called a preferred size widget and by adding this type of widget we can then add the stopwatch text as well as the text to show whether or not the user has won or lost. So to get this preferred size to work properly we need to set up a property called preferred size and our size will be based on the height which means from the top of our app bar so we want this to be 45 pixels in size and then inside of it we'll give it a row if you look at our app bar it's now quite a bit bigger and that's because it's being extended downwards due to our preferred size box inside of our row let's start with a flat button the flat button will have text that says reset board and then the style of this text will be colors, colors white. The unpressed will then call our reset board function which will reset the entire game. So now you can see here we have this little button here and if we click it, it resets the entire board state. And now I can play again. If we want, we can also decorate this button by adding in a property called highlight color. This will make it so that when we push the button, it will actually change the color of the button. So there are also various other properties that we can add in here. For instance, if we want to change the actual shape of the button, or if we want to add a border to the button, we can also add what's called a splash color. So if you see when I click the button, it turns red and then it turns green. So this adds the splash color, so the color that sort of ripples out when we push the button, and then the highlight color is the color that appears afterwards. Let's give this button what's called a stadium border. Now if we click on it, you can see it's sort of rounded. And of course, if we want to add a border to our button, we can then put inside of our stadium border a side and then just add border side. And of course we can change the color of the border if we want as well. To further style this button, I'm just going to color it with colors, blue accent 100. So now you can see this looks quite a bit better. All right, so now let's move on to our timer, our win state and our lose state. Now for our win state and our loss state, as well as our timer, all we have to do is create a container We'll give it a height one and we'll also align it in the center. And then inside of this container, we'll have a rich text with a text span. And then the text inside will first check our one game Boolean. And if it's true, then it will say you've won. And then it will also say the elapsed time in seconds. Then it will check to see if we're alive. And if we're alive, then we will show the mines found the total mines, and the mines found of course is the mines found variable, and our total nines is our number of mines variable, and then it will also show the time elapsed in seconds, and if we're not alive, then it will show you've lost with the time elapsed and seconds. So here is our example, you can see we've got our brackets, and it's showing us mines found zero, total mines 11, 
and the seconds that have passed. Now, like with our button, we can add a bunch of different styling to our text. And I'll leave that to you guys if you really want to do that. I'm just going to leave it how it is because I think it's sufficient for what we currently have. I know that the rounded button looks a little strange, so maybe let's try something a little bit different. We'll make our button into a rectangle, and this looks a little bit better. I also would like to show you what happens when we actually win the game. So what I'm going to do is reduce the total number of mines that are in the board. To do this, I can come up here and I can change this number. Let's say I'm going to change it to three so that there are only three mines on the board. We do have to perform a full reset for this to actually work. So now it says total mines three. If we click anywhere, it will now expand out. And now I can just click all the places where mines currently are. And to actually win the game, we need to then put flags over top of where these mines are. And once we put the flags over top of it, it now says you've won and it gives us the amount of time it took us to win. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you disliked it, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good night.